Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the last session for all of you in this class 12. So it's very difficult for me to deliver this session for all of you, but still due to the pandemic, we have learned this online classes. And uh, we have uh, adapted to the new way of life and I'm sure, especially for computer science students, so if you think that after the pandemic, the life is going to resume back. My dear students, please give a thought. All of you are getting a classes you now sitting back at your home. And most of the things, most of them are working from home. Nobody has not suffered with the quality and nobody has stopped their work. Do you think the world will resume back to the normal state? I will leave the question to you. You need to think about it. You are saving a lot of petrol. You are saving a lot of time staying back home. So we also invented a different method. Even we can also do like this. But uh, I really miss the classes. I really miss all of you. No, it is not possible for me to see you directly in all my classes. But of course, we have the Q&A session. We can meet up there. By saying all these things, let me not make you bored. But uh, with a heavy hearted, uh, I will be starting this session. Uh, my dear students, let me start the recap for all of you. What is that we have done and we have discussed in this chapter in the previous sessions. We, ha we have discussed what exactly the networking is all about, what is internet, what is interspace, what is ARPANET and also we discussed different network topologies that we had and also we have discussed different networking devices also. And also along with that we have discussed different transmission medium and different types of networks. Including that we have also discussed different protocols what we had. So please understand all these topics before you come to this. Today I have uh, picked up you now an uh, interesting topic for all of you. So what is that I'm going to discuss? I will be speaking a little about the mobile processor and I will be speaking mainly with respect to the mobile telecommunication technologies. So what is that I have? I have something called generations. Before I start this 1G, let me speak about generations. G in the sense generation. So in each and every generation, there is an improvement in the mobile technology. So we are going to study, we are going to discuss that in each and every generation, what is the updates that we have received. So please make a note of it. We have started with the first generation. In the 1G, we started mainly for voice communication. We were able to communicate or we were able to transmit only the voice. We were not able to send the text data. So that was the major drawback we had. That is the first point that you should remember. And it was introduced in the year 1980s. Please make a note. It was having, it was providing a poor, a poor battery life. It was used, it used to consume a lot of power from your batteries. That was a major challenge for all of us. And we were using analog technology when we were in the first generation. And along with that, we were having a security problem. We were having a security problem. What we used to transmit the data was not so very highly secured. That is one of the important things that we should make a note of it. And then, so the calls used to get dropped oftenly. That was a major drawback that we had. So all these drawbacks we had in the first generation. But if you ask me, then what is the good news that we had in the first generation? So in this generation, we started communicating. We were able to send the voice call. We were able to speak. We were able to send the voice data that was in short only in the first generation. Then how did we overcome from all this topic, all these drawbacks? So we had the next generation that is 2G. When it comes to 2G, we were able to send not only the voice data, we were also able to send the text data and also multimedia messages. It can be a 
image, it can be a sound, whatever we have it as a multimedia. So we were able to send these two when we entered the second generation. They also call this generation as a major comeback. They had a major changes when we transferred from first generation to second generation because it addressed most of the problems like you know battery draining, frequent call drops, analog to digital. So all these things were get resolved in this generation. So you all know only we had 2G but we also had 2.5G and 2.75G. Please don't forget this. So in this generation, we started sending, you guys were able to access or able to use the data. That is what I will call it as the internet. All right. So guys, with a minimum speed, we started using the internet. So in this generation is what you have to remember. So probably this will be a new thing for all of you. So you, you don't have this in your textbook. I would like to introduce this topic to all of you. All right, so we understood that the data internet got introduced in this generation with a minimum speed and then how exactly it evolved. So we have the next generation that is 3G. All of you know about 3G more in detail, but let me point out some of the things. So more data video calling was enabled when you enter the 3G. So please understand. So we were using only in terms of MB, but you guys started using the GB of data, you started consuming more data when it comes to third generation. And also you started using the video calling, video conferencing when it comes to 3G. Also a lot of mobile internet, lot of lot of mobile internet you started using when you come to the 3G. You need to observe two important aspects. The internet speed differs from two people one is a stationary guys who is standing in one particular position and using and one more who is traveling. The internet speed differs for both of them. Please understand maximum speed for a stationary guys was in 3G is 2 Mbps when he is in a, when he is traveling. So he will be getting 384 Kbps. The speed varies based on you. If you are in one place, so the speed is different. If you are traveling, the speed is different. So automatically speed reduces when you are traveling. That's what you need to remember when it comes to 3G. So guys, I have the next one that is 4G. So when it comes to 4G, you started using, you, you started calling a lot of people, Alexa. So play that music, Alexa, play the channel, Alexa. Oh, do that for me, do that for me, do this for me. So a lot of things came into picture when it comes to the concept of 4G. So you started watching the television, you started watching the HD videos, you started watching all these things with a video conference, with a 4K videos. Everything was possible when we started using the 4G. What exactly the latest development that we had in the 4G, high speed internet, you cannot imagine when it comes to 4G. Please understand the maximum speed of 4G network the device is moving is 100 Mbps. This is just amazing. So because of the intrusion of 4G, a lot of applications, a lot of things started evolving, especially the best example that I can give you is our class. So if we don't have the proper internet, it was not very successful for all of us to have a live interactive classes which exactly creates our classroom feel. So that is very important. Please don't forget that. We should never forget the concept of the support of internet what we are getting today. So that is very important. And then we have 5G. So guys, I have listed out some of the points with respect to the 5G. Let's uh, Understand 5G is a wireless technology with a limited rollout that intended to improve on 4G. Please understand this is very important. What is that we need to never forget? So when it comes to 5G, it promises a significant faster data rates. When we compare all other uh, generations, the main thing that we are looking for is high speed internet. How exactly it is providing the you know, data with the highest data transmission rate. 
So that's what we are trying to check. So obviously 5G is supporting that and higher connection density and that is one of the important point that we should remember much lower latency latency in the sense of delay. So that's what you need to understand and energy saving energy saving that's a very important point that all of us are facing among any other improvements. Yes, let's speak about it. Guys, say for example, most of us are facing uh, uh, this problem. Now, you, you, you will not have a longer battery life whenever we compare to the older phones. You started using 4G, battery is getting drained for a day and maximum one and a half a day. Why? Because it consumes a lot of battery. It, it consumes a lot of battery. If you use 4G, if you turn off your internet and keep your mobile phone, trust me, you will get more than you know, three to four days of battery life. All right, that's the amount of battery it is consuming. That will be short. That will be resolved when we are moving on to the 5G. The anticipated theoretical speed. So that is this is what we are expecting. 20 Gbps. What is that? 20 Gbps is what we can expect when we move on to the 5G. If I have 5G connection, just imagine if I put a download for a movie, boom. Your movie is in your download box, right? So that will be the speed that you will have if we are having the 5G. That's what you need to remember. So what is the next one that we have? Features of 5G. So attractive and effective and I have fast action and solution and avoids errors and accurate and consistency, virtual private network, enhanced and available connectivity. All these things you just go through. This is not so very important. It's not the mobile processor guys this is very cool that we need to understand this last topic a small topic that we have a cpu chip is designed for laptop tablets smartphones and other portable devices so please understand i have the cpu chip central processing unit chip okay so obviously cpu is a chip so that is designed basically for laptop mobile phones and also portable devices all right we have designed that the mobile processor uses low voltage and are designed to run cooler the cpus in the desktop computers very important even i have the cpu for mobile phone also as well as for the cpu also but mobile phone cpu consumes the low voltage power when we compare to the desktop that is a one of the point that you should remember they typically have more sleep modes. This is very important. Why? What is the importance of more sleep modes? Say, for example, I have multiple parts and multiple uh, sections which is working. If I have multiple sections, suppose if it is not working, so I will turn it off to the sleep mode so that I can save the memory. That's the main agenda of sleep mode in the mobile computing. That's the best part of it. All right, the most widely used mobile processor are ARM chips. So most likely used mobile chips are ARM chip. So my dear students, so by saying this, I have come to an end of this session and I've come to an end of this syllabus for all of you with a lot of love. I will sign off today. I'm really, really feeling sad. All right, uh, stay safe, stay healthy. And I want all of you to score really good marks. See you in the Q&A sessions. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.